Hello, this is Dr. Jeff Tarrant, director of the Neuro Meditation Institute. And in this lesson, we wanted to begin exploring heart rate variability biofeedback. So what it is, and then how you might use this in conjunction with certain styles of meditation. So to begin with, uh, I want to explain that we're, the software you're, we're using is called M-Wave, E-M-W-A-V-E. -E. It's by a company called HeartMath. There are other companies that you can use for biofeedback, for heart rate variability biofeedback. I like this software and hardware because it's easy to use, it's pretty cost efficient, and uh, it's accessible. So I will be pro providing links to um, their website in the text that accompanies this lesson so you can check it out for yourself if you're interested. So the first thing to explain is that basically there's a hardware and a software component. The hardware is actually very simple. So you can see that it's a, a USB plug right here connected to a long wire that has an ear clip and that's it. So this is one of the things I really appreciate about this type of system is that you don't need any gel or goop. You don't actually you don't even have to clean anything in terms of uh, the skin. Uh, you do have to clean the sensor obviously but uh, this is all you need uh, from a hardware perspective. So we'll plug this into the USB port and you can see on the computer screen I've already got pulled up the software. You have to be able to find the USB port. Great. And so now I'm going to attach the sensor to my volunteer. Uh, is it okay if I attach this to your ear? Yeah. Okay. And so all I'm going to do is take this little clip and attach it to the bottom of the earlobe. In fact, let me do it on the other side so you can kind of see it a little bit better. And that's it. That's the hookup. There's an additional uh, little clip right here so that you can attach it to the side of the shirt so that it doesn't pull on the ear. And that's it. Um, so again, like I was saying, it's a very easy setup. It's something that's uh, very accessible. Now, what we're going to be looking at is measurements of the heart rate, heart rate variability that we're actually picking up from her earlobe. So you can actually measure the heart rate and uh, aspects of heart rate anywhere on the body because the heart is a very powerful electromagnetic generator. So you can pick up those signals anywhere if you have a, a sensitive enough equipment. So now if you look at my computer screen, we started the session and on the bottom, what you were seeing there was simply the pulse. So it was just the heart rhythm, you know, bump, 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 the heartbeat. And then after about 20 seconds, the screen shifted into more of a biofeedback mode. Now, if you look at the bottom of the screen, there's a little area that says current HR, and you'll see a number in there. And essentially, this is the running average of Ray's heart rate. So it's just telling you kind of what her heart rate is right now. And again, it's an average. Uh, you'll notice when you watch that number that it doesn't stay static. It's not the same uh, moment to moment. So if it's at 75, it doesn't stay at 75. It'll fluctuate. And this is actually really important because what we are measuring with this system is heart rate variability, how the heart rate varies recognizing that the heart rate is not static. It's not a metronome. It doesn't behave that way. In fact, we don't want it to behave that way. That'd be bad if your heart just consistently had the exact same rhythm. So if you look at the top of the screen where there is this line kind of moving up and down, this is what we're interested in. It's, it's part of what we're interested in. You'll see on that graph that on the side is beats per minute. So it's literally showing us what Ray's average heart rate is over this time period that we've been recording. And again, you can see very clearly when it's mapped out like this that the heart rate goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, it fluctuates. This is an aspect of heart rate variability, how it varies. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. Now, why do we care about this? The main reason that we care about heart rate variability is because it's an excellent measure of nervous system balance. So if you think about it, we have 
a sympathetic nervous system. This is part of the autonomic nervous system. And the sympathetic nervous system is activating. That we think of it as our fight or flight system. So if there's a danger, if there's something in the environment we have to respond to, it turns everything on, right? So it dilates our pupils. It increases blood flow to the large muscle groups. It increases our heart rate. So it's all part of the sympathetic arousal network. There's also a parasympathetic network, which is the opposite. So you could think of this as the rest and digest system. And literally, its functions are the exact opposite of the sympathetic nervous system. So rather than activating things, it actually quiets things, turns things down. So in relation to the heart rate, it decreases the heart rate. So what you're actually seeing here when you're watching the fluctuation of the heart rate on the screen is you're literally seeing sympathetic activation when the heart rate goes up, parasympathetic activation when the heart rate goes down. So this is why it's important to have movement. You don't want that wave to just be static because that would essentially mean you're stuck in either sympathetic or parasympathetic mode. And we don't want that. We want to balance. The way that we're able to show balance in this system is by a fluctuation. You spend a little time in sympathetic and then you spend a little time in parasympathetic. And then you spend a little time in sympathetic and a little time in parasympathetic. Your body can't do both at the same time. It has to choose. It can only be in one or the other. So the best way to find balance is to take turns. So that's literally what we're wanting to see on the top of the screen is the movement. And the bigger the movement, the better. So the larger the heart rate variability, the more it's connected to things related to health. You can think of this as indicating that your nervous system is flexible and adaptive if there's a lot of variability, if there's a lot of movement. So you can see right now that uh, Ray's got a really nice variability pattern. There's a lot of movement happening here. There's a lot of up, a lot of down. There's a, a, so a semi-consistent pattern beginning to develop. So now what we do with the software, or what the software does, is it takes this information about your variability pattern and it analyzes it in some statistical ways that we're not going to get into in this lesson. And it calculates something that it calls coherence. So if you look at the bottom corner of the screen where it's got the thermometers, there's a red, a blue, and a green thermometer. And those reflect low, medium, and high coherence. Now, what this essentially means is that if your heart rate variability pattern is stable and consistent, if there's a lot of variability, but there's a stable and consistent pattern, then that's high coherence, meaning your system is in balance, your nervous system is in balance. If it's kind of sort of balanced, but not all the way, it's going to be medium, and then the blue light is going to light up. And if you're not so balanced at the moment, it's going to be the red. So this is part of the feedback. You're getting additional information about the balance of your nervous system by whether you're in low, medium, or high, moment to moment. So you can watch the top graph of information showing the variability. You can look at the thermometers at the bottom to kind of give you a sense of where you are in terms of coherence. So the trick, of course, is to learn how to intentionally shift yourself into more medium and high coherence and spend less time in low coherence. So there are a vast array of strategies to do this because we are a mind-body. Everything you think, everything you do, everything you feel affects the balance of your nervous system. So what this means is that you can intervene in this system through your thoughts, through your feelings, through your breath, through visualization. Virtually anything that you do that affects your mind-body is going to have an impact here. So this is why this becomes a very powerful tool is because it opens itself to a wide range of strategies on how to influence it and how to, how to keep your nervous system in a better state of balance. Great tool for stress and anxiety. It's great for PTSD. It's actually a, a lot of research using this with traumatic brain injuries. So this was the introduction just so that you have an orientation to what biofeedback is, what heart rate variability biofeedback is. 
in the next lesson, we're really going to dive in a bit further so that you can see how you might use this specifically with a focus meditation. All right, welcome back. This is Dr. Jeff Tarrant, director of the Neuro Meditation Institute. And we wanted to follow up on the heart rate variability biofeedback lesson to look at ways that you might use this type of technology in conjunction with a focus meditation or as a tool to assist in a focus style of meditation. So we've already discussed in the previous lesson what's happening on this screen that we're looking at. Again, we're using the HeartMath software, M-Wave Plus, and we're just using the basic screen. There's actually a lot of other screens that come with this software, different games and, and visualizers and things like that. We're actually using the basic screen because there's a lot of information on here that can be really helpful, particularly if you're using it the way that we're going to be using it. So, uh, if you kind of look at what's happening on the screen right now, we've just been letting it run for a, a while. And you can see there's a lot of variability. There's also some little choppy parts on here and some things like this. This is going to be related to all kinds of different aspects of what Ray's up to right now. So whatever she's thinking about, probably the fact that she's on camera and I'm talking about her right now, that'll probably add a little bit of stress and anxiety. Um, so we might see, she just laughed. Look, you can see where her heart rate jumped up a little bit because she laughed. So, um, you know, we can see kind of what's happening right now in real time. Now, the first step, if you're going to use this as a meditation tool, is to help people learn how to get into a good state of coherence. And so the first strategy that I usually teach people is how to use their breath as a way to develop a, a more coherent heart rate variability pattern. So. Ray, what I would like you to do is just kind of watch the top of the screen up here. Don't worry about this so much right now. And just focus on belly breathing. So just as you're breathing in, that most of the uh, movement is going to come from the belly region. So as you inhale, the belly sticks out. And then as you exhale, the belly will retract back. So just let the breathing be nice and slow and steady coming from the belly. And you can see that as soon as she changes her breathing, look what happens to the heart rate variability pattern. So not only did the heart rate variability increase dramatically, so it went from maybe, you know, maybe a five beats per minute fluctuation to now it's almost a 20 beat per minute fluctuation. And you remember from the previous lesson that we were saying that the greater the variability, the better it is for health and well-being. So just by changing the breathing into a belly breathing pattern that's soft and gentle, we get this really large heart rate variability, but also look at how smooth and consistent it is. This is exactly what we want. This is what the system designates as high coherence. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see that the green is put up and that's where she's kind of racking up percentage points. It's keeping track of the percentage of time that she has been in each one of these uh, different levels of coherence. So, this is beautiful, this is perfect. And so, what I would like you to do is simply keep this pattern up by using your breath. So, watching your breath, watching this pattern, and seeing if you can keep each one of these waves essentially identical just by using your breath. You can also kind of follow as it goes up, coordinating that with your inhalation, and as the line comes down, cord coordinating that with your exhalation. So just kind of following. If you see places on the screen where there's like a blue line, Sometimes you'll also see a red line. That's simply where we lost the signal for a moment. And so the software is compensating for that. So it's, it's not a problem, but uh, you will see that periodically when you're measuring somebody's heart rate variability pattern. So you can see that Ray's doing a really nice job here with this. And so think about the instructions that I just gave her. 
So I'm asking her to watch her breath and to coordinate her breathing with what she's seeing on the screen and just to stay right there. Now, we're starting to see that it's, it just got a little bit more shallow. So I'm gonna wanna check in at some point and find out what happened right there. Um, but what I want you to start to pay attention to is how this is actually a breath-focused meditation. Now we think of breath-focused meditation as an eyes-closed practice where you're internally watching your breath. Right? You're just watching what's happening. You're watching as you breathe in through your air through the nostrils and breathe out through the mouth. Or feeling the cool air as you breathe in and the warm air as you breathe out. Or feeling the belly expand or feeling the belly contract with each breath. And that, that is what you're focused on for a focused meditation. This is a very common way to practice. Well, guess what? You can take those same principles and add the biofeedback and it makes the process much more engaging. It's much easier to hold your attention because you have something external giving you information about what your breathing is doing. So you still have to watch your breathing in your body. You still have to pay attention to what's happening here, but you have additional information, additional feedback to help you stay on track. Every time you see a fluctuation, that's information. Something changed there. Perhaps the mind wandered or perhaps the breathing became more shallow, or perhaps there was a sort of feeling state that got engaged somehow. This is exactly what you do with a meditation practice, right? You're watching your breath, the mind gets distracted, it gets pulled off by something else, you recognize that the mind got pulled off, and you bring it right back.